Hi there, and welcome to the Let's Play of Icewind Dale. I am Byron. They say that history is the greatest of all teachers, and that tales of past deeds define who we are in the present, and what we shall be in the future. It is said that such tales shall, with each telling, illuminate us all with the light of truth. I shall tell you of such a tale. It is a tale quite familiar to me, for I have spent nearly a lifetime piecing it together and chronicling it here within this book. For years I have pondered its passages, studying every line, committing each word to memory. Perhaps now, in the telling of it, I shall at last find the answers I seek. Our story takes place in the northern region of Faerun, known as Icewind Dale. It is a harsh, frozen land, cut off from the rest of the world by a wall of jagged peaks called the Spine of the World. For centuries, the icy plains of the Dale have been home to the barbarian peoples of the Uthgard and Regedmen. Huddled together in small, closely knit tribes, the barbarians lived simple lives, free, proud, and fiercely independent. Until the day an archmage named Arakan came to Icewind Dale. With an army of mercenaries, Arakan sought to conquer the north and force the fierce barbarians into slavery. Long weeks of battle followed, and the scattered barbarian tribes suffered terrible losses. Defeat seemed inevitable. In their darkest hour, a barbarian shaman named Gerard came forth and demanded a council between all the remaining tribes of the north. A respected warrior, Gerard persuaded the council to put aside their differences and unite against Arakan. Strengthened by a new sense of purpose, the barbarians rallied behind their new leader. The combined might of the Northmen proved more than a match for Arakan, who had counted on the division of the tribes. Wave after wave of barbarian warriors tore into Arakan's hired army, forcing them on the defensive and ultimately into full retreat. As his army crumbled around him, Arakan had time for one last desperate act before his enemies descended upon him. Drawing upon his remaining power, the Archmage breached the planar boundaries, tearing open a portal to the lower plains. The foolish Archmage's cries of victory immediately turned to shrieks of terror as the hideous and twisted shapes of demonkind materialized from the portal and poured onto the battlefield. The sudden appearance of the demons drove the combatants, barbarian and mercenary alike, to turn to meet the new threat side by side. The remaining warriors bravely charged the portal to drive the hellspawn back and were slaughtered by the hundreds. As his people fell around him, the barbarian shaman, Jared, looked up from the blood-drenched snow of the battlefield and caught sight of a lone figure high upon a ridge in the distance. Jared immediately recognized this vision as an omen from his god, Tempus. And in that instant, he knew what had to be done. Shouting cries to his god, he charged through the ranks of the demons and plunged into the portal. As Jared's blood fused with the energies of the portal, an explosion of white light engulfed the battlefield. When the light subsided, the demons were gone, and the portal was closed. In its place hovered a disk of solid stone. Frozen within the center of the disk was Jared's body, locked in his final moment of agony, in his final moment of triumph for all eternity. But that is not the end of our tale. It is but the beginning. 
I know what you're thinking, and you are right. You're thinking what's wrong with this guy, he already has two LPs running, one of which is uh, probably gonna last forever, and now he starts the third one, yeah I know I know. But this game, Icewind Dale, has been standing on my shelf for about 9 years now, and I want to play this and I, you know, installed it a few days back and played it a little, and found that I really liked it and I thought what the hell, why not make a let's play out of that. So here it is, the let's play of Icewind Dale. Yep, so let's create a game. Of course we create a full game. And as in any RPG, you can create a game by choosing a gender, race, class, alignment and so on and so on. But by now you should know that I like to play my own characters. I have already created a few. The first one is a paladin. It's gotta be human, male, uh, lawful good of course, perfect stats. As I like to play them. Uh, he is proficient with missile, missile, missile weapons, with missile weapons and large swords. Ah, the appearance is fine, I guess. And I want him to sound like this. Here I come, and the hells come with me. Right. And he's going to uh, be named Storm Fireblade. That's number one. Number two actually is another human, a female this time. It's a fighter, but if you take a look at her picture, you know I'm going to do a class entry with Cleric soon. She also has perfect stats. Her uh, appearance is okay, I guess. And I think you should sound like that. You would do well to fear a woman's wrath. And she's gonna be named Goldmore Giant Spain. So those two will be the frontline characters. They will uh, be the damage dealer in my party. The melee fighters. Um, then of course you need a thief. This will be this one. A halfling. Neutral good. Um, the strength are as good as the, the stats are as good as the stats of a halfling can be. In the beginning I put everything into pickpockets. This will come in handy in the beginning of the game. Later I will raise the other uh, thief proficiencies. And he's proficient with bows and small swords. The appearance is okay, I guess. I think you should sound like this. The silent blade cuts best. Yes. And you're gonna be called Tolpan Star Sparrow. Um, yep, so that's the thief of the party. And we still need a mage. That's number four. An elf mage, neutral good, perfect stats for an elf. Um, knows the spells, identifying magic missiles, and is proficient with missile weapons. Yeah, the picture doesn't really look much like a mage, but I well took a look at all the pictures that the game gives me, and I think it's the most beautiful one. And since we're going to have to look at her. Um, during the whole game, so it should be pleasing on the eye. And it's an elf. So, I think you should sound like that. Let's spill some blood. That's sexy. And her name is Seldana Evenstar. And that's actually it. We have a paladin, we're going to have a cleric, a thief, and a mage. And that's the party. Uh, you know, moving six party members around, you could have six party members in the in the party, but moving around six party members, especially in dungeons with narrow passages, is quite bothersome. So I will only use four. Um, that will also mean they get more experience, are easier to handle, and it's like a classical EOB party. After the Beholder party, we have a fighter, a cleric, a thief, and a mage. They should be able to handle every situation, at least I hope. It really depends on whether the mage, uh, the, the cleric after I dueled her, will be strong enough uh, to stand in the front line. Because you probably need two melee fighters in a game. So let's see how that works out. Our tale begins here, in the quiet fishing village of Easthaven, one of the so-called Ten Towns of Icewind Dale. The tiny community is hardly a town, but rather a collection of ramshackle huts crowded together upon the icy shores of Lac Dinashir. Here, within a dimly lit tavern, a group of travelers sit huddled around a table, 
swapping tales, and making grand plans for the future, completely unaware of the part they are to play in the events that are about to unfold. What's this? New face in town, eh? Well met, stranger. The name is Rothgar, originally of Hillsfar. But now, after years of traveling up, down, and under Faerun, I am content to call this town my home. Who might you be? Greetings, Rothgar. My name is Storm Fireblade. Well then, welcome to East Haven. Whatever your business in these parts might be, I would offer you this small piece of advice. While you're in my town, you'd do well to be on your best behavior. These folk are under my protection, and anyone who would seek to do harm to them in any way shall answer to me. That said, I'll let you get back to your cups. I'm sure you've had a long journey, and you'll find there's no better way to shake off the cold of the road than by downing a few mugs of Grisella's best. And if you're in need of lodging, I would recommend talking to Quimby over at the Snowdrift Inn over on the east side of town. Equipment and supplies can be purchased next door at Pomab's Emporium. Uh, Pomab's prices are a bit high, even for a Kalashite. But you'd be better off well-equipped and short of coin than the other way around. Ill-prepared travelers don't last long in these parts. Once you've had a chance to rest up and get your bearings, come by and see me at my house. It's just a couple doors west of here. There's some business I would discuss with you. Farewell. Farewell. So, here we are in an inn. We don't have much equipment, everybody has a quarter staff, and that's pretty much it. There are several Ready. townspersons here. And the dwarf. And that is the barkeep. Done. So we say hi to the barkeep. Hello there, dearie. Welcome to the Winter's Cradle Tavern. My name is Grisella. I own and operate this fine establishment. What can I get for you? How about a drink? A drink? Of course, dearie. After all, this is a tavern. Plenty to drink here. <laughs> yeah, well, what do you have? Uh, yes, well, you see, I'm in a bit of a bind right now. I've just run out of everything. I have nothing to offer you in the way of drink at this moment. Uh, you run out of everything? Well, the tavern hasn't completely run dry. I do have some stuck down in the cellar, but... But what? This is rather embarrassing. But I'm having somewhat of a pest problem down in the dirty old cellar, and I'm afraid to go down there. I do so hate bugs. Just the thought of those nasty creepy crawlies... Uh, creepies and crawly sends shivers down my spine. I see. Is there anything I can do to help? That's awfully sweet of you, dearie, but I don't expect you to go to any trouble on my account. I'm sure I'll think of something. Have no fear, madam. I shall see to it that the pests down below trouble you no further. Wonderful. The stairs to the cellars are in the back room. Now you be careful down there, dearie, and don't let any of these little buggers creep back up here, alright? Alright. Here. So the stairs are here. Oh, the mage is being stupid again. Get down there, girl. And here we have four bucks. Or beetles. Uh, Ringo, uh, McPaul, Johnny, and. Um, Your luck's run out. What's the fourth beetle? Ah, I don't know. I wasn't born at that time. Uh, wooden casks of strong smelling ruse have been stacked in the corner. I'm on it. Done. Any luck getting rid of those nasty bugs, dearie? My customers are getting pretty thirsty. It is done. Those bugs won't be troubling you anymore. Thank you, dearie. You're a lifesaver. Just don't do me one more favor. Keep this little bug problem between you and me. I don't want folks, folks thinking Grisella's place isn't clean. Run along now. And we get 1200 XP and an awesome amount of 5 gold pieces. Yay. Okay, so now we have like 355 gold coins. That's awesome. Uh, so the guy said that, you know, Agreed. that's the tavern here. Um, as it says, as it's written on those on that signpost, and that signpost here says Pomab's Emporium. 
So this is probably where we're gonna buy stuff. I'll handle it. So let's say hi to the shopkeeper. What is this? More barbarians come to my shop? No doubt with nothing to bother with but more wolf pelts and polished stones. Very well, let's get this over with. What do you want? Barbarians? I think you're mistaken, friend. Am I now? I do not think so. All of you Northerners are the same to me, smelly and barbaric. Northerners? I take it you are not from around here. Hmm. I am Pomab Akazmir, Royal Diplomatic Envoy of Kalimshan and appointed overseer of the Northern Caravan, caravan Routes. Oh, I see. Your appearance as a lowly shopkeeper is just a clever disguise to throw off any would-be assassins, am I right? Your poor attempt at sarcasm is an obvious sign of your lowly build. I'll have you know that I am the third cousin, cousin of the Pasha himself, not to mention a royal courtier, courtier in good standing. Well, if you're in such a good standing in Kalimshan, what in the nine hells are you doing all the way up here in Icewind Dale? The Pasha um, asked me to accept this post as overseer of the Northern Caravan routes as a personal favor. Interesting. Tell me, overseer. Did you ever hear of such a post before the Pasha offered it to you? Well, I, um, I grow tired of your ridiculous questions. I have many applications to tend to, so I suggest you quit wasting my time. Either buy something or get out. Fine, what do you have to say? So, well, we need to buy things. First of all, a splint mail for you. And a helmet. Uh, I like this one, it looks better. Then this looks rather stupid and did too. But that's, it's okay. Yes, fashion is important. And a large shield. And a long sword. And... Two, 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 two. A sling and bullets. Oh yeah, I'm using a mod here, the ease of use mod. Uh, ease of use mod. It allows you to st uh, stack more uh, projectiles and potions. It's really useful. And you also buy a splint mail and a helmet. But you take a morning star. Wait a second, did I overlook the shields? Oh, we don't have any large shields, so you take a medium shield. And a morning star, yes. And a sling and bullets. So, you should buy... <sighs> Wait a second. I gave you a proficiency with uh, short sword, so you buy one. Um, arrows and a short bow. You can't use um. No, you can't use helmets. Oh wait a second. Um, studded leather armor. Oh dang it! We're running out of money. Good thing the mage doesn't need much in the weapons department. Just a sling. A bullet. And that's it. Okay. So first of all, get rid of those quarter staffs. Nobody needs those. Thanks. Okay, we're equipped. Orders. Awesome. What's that? These shelves are stocked with various and sundry items ranging from books and parchment to clothing, food and cookware. None of the items appear to be of much value. And here we have our uh, quarterstaffs. Yeah, the nice thing about Icewind Dale is that if you press uh, the button, uh, the alt button, Agreed. Uh, then everything that lies on the ground uh, gets highlighted. 
Scores of knucklehead hang from these wooden racks. The stench from the drying fish is almost unbearable. Okay. There's a door. Get in there. All right. Hey there, matey. How are you doing? Uh, nice to meet you. How are you? Not so good, matey. Grisella and a barkeep over at the Winter's Cradle cut me off. How am I supposed to get any proper fishing done? Uh, why did she do that? The barkeep says I'll be drinking too much. What does she know? I've only overturned my boat three, well, four times. Anyway, I need my wine to fish proper like. You probably should take the longest answer. I guess you need uh, high wisdom to get that. Uh, the wine isn't really what you need. It is just a symbol of your lost youth and your failure to accomplish all that you wanted to in the short span of time that you have in this desolate wasteland, this this East Haven. The bottle is your prison, a cornucopia of sanguinarity, delight that represents all of your problems in this world. Seriously. I... Uh, well... Hmm. I never really had it explained to me that way, matey. I suppose that does make sense now that I think about it. In fact, that'd be the best advice I've had in a long time. Thank you, matey. Here's a little something for your help. I'm glad I could help you. Farewell. And we got 1200 XP because we have conceived Olja that he's caught in a self-destructive cycle of alcohol abuse. We also get six uh, gold pieces. Let's get out of here. Done. What's wrong with you? Taking the long way, hmm? How does that damn song go? I don't know. Hi. Hmm? Eh? Oh, sorry friend, I didn't see you standing there. Name's Jonan. Something I can do for you? Are you alright? You seem preoccupied. No, no, I'm fine. Just taking in the view of the lake for a bit, trying to shake these dreams out of my head. The lake's beautiful, isn't it? Dreams? Usually those fade upon waking, friend. Maybe a day's wealth of fishing will chase them away. Ah, well, the dreams have been fishing in me of late, friend. So much so I can barely catch a wink before they rouse me from it. A frustration it is at times. Sometimes it seems like they're more real than the, real, than the waking world. What kind of dreams? Well, there's a woman, and don't give me that eye, it's not like you think. She walks upon the surface of the lake as if it were flagstones instead of waves. She doesn't say anything, just sings beautiful songs, but I can't understand a word. Well, if dreams are your only worry, John, in your life can't be too bad. Dreams should be a comfort, not a curse. If truth be told, friend, I... Th Damn it, there's no sense to it. These dreams are eating at me like a starving wolf. I can barely hold a daily thought in my head before the memory of the dreams hounds its way back in here, in there. I... By the nine hells, I don't know how much more of this I can take. <clears throat> if I find a... If I can find some way to help you, John, and I will. I don't know how I can, but I'll see what I can find out. Eh, you're not playing on a man's hopes, are you? I'd be grateful for just one night of peace. I'll see what I can do. If I think of anything, I will return. Okay, so what do we have? That was the Cradle Tavern, okay. And that here is the Fishmonger. Let's say hi to him. Hello, Mr. Fishmonger. Uh, please Understood. stop. I want to talk to you. Well met, stranger. The name's Gaspar. Gaspar the Fishmonger. What can I do for you this fine day? Fishmonger? This doesn't look much like a fish shop. That's because it isn't my friend. This is my home. I may be a fishmonger, but that doesn't mean I hawk fish like some street vendor. I lead in large quantities of dried knucklehead and scrimshaw, the bulk of which I keep stored in my warehouse down on the shore. Dried? What? Knucklehead trout. It's a rare fish found only in the lakes of the Ten Towns. Their bones are used to produce valuable scrimshaw. What exactly is scrimshaw? Scrimshaw is simply a fancy name for a carved bone. Since knucklehead trout are so rare, scrimshaw carvings made from their bone are particularly valuable. Scrimshaw from East Haven is prized by fine artists and craftsmen throughout the realms. You must make a decent amount of coin selling these fish. It's an honest living. I can make I make most of my profit from trade, though. As a matter of fact, I have an important transaction in the works as we speak. What sort of transaction? 
The town food town's food stores are running dangerously low. My warehouse foreman Churin tells me that there may not be enough food to last through the coming winter. I've arranged a trade with old Calloway up in Caldinaval that will keep our stomachs full well into the next year. The caravan's due to arrive any day now. Well, best of luck to you. Farewell. Okay, and there's nothing in here, right? Okay, no, there isn't. And the next house Agreed. is that of Rothgar, so we go in there too. Oh yes, so um, as you can see, uh, there's a chest and some sort of cabinet. For what you easily done? Lockpick failed. Dang it. Oh, this one worked. Okay, what do we get? Okay, bow and some arrows. Why did I buy the bow again? Oh, so forget it. So, if you can't pick this lock, maybe you can bash it open. I'm on it. You have successfully forced the door open. Awesome. What do we get? A note. If you are reading this note, then obviously you are a thief come to rob me of my hard-won riches. Sorry to disappoint you, did you really think I would keep my valuables in such an obvious and unguarded place? Consider this note a warning. I do not care much for those who would poke their nose where it does not belong, and anyone caught practicing thievery in the town of East Haven shall answer to me. Rothgar. Fine, then we put it back. So. No harm you have done, my right? Attention. What do we have here? Oh, that's interesting. Thick, rubbery tentacles dangle from the squid-like head of this strange beast. The creature's dull black orbs stare eeringly, eeringly at you from up on the wall, as if it were silently observing you. Oh, fuck, I can't read that. Oh, the mounted head of this beast resembles that of a large black bull. bull. Closer inspection reveals that the creature's hide is actually composed of thick metal scales. The snout of this peculiar metal animal has an odd greenish tint to it. Okay, and there's another one. This bare wooden mounting plate has an inscription carved into it. This inscription reads, The Invisible Stalker. <laughs> okay, uh, could we touch it, whether there's actually something mounted on it? Okay, I guess that's all. Yeah, say hi to Rothgar. Well met, friend, and welcome to my home. Make yourselves comfortable, but try not to break anything. Many of these curiosities that you see lying about have... sentimental value. Um, well, you have quite a collection here. Oh, they're all remembrances of my adventuring days. Little trinkets and the like that I've picked up here and there. More keepsakes than valuables, really. Leftovers from my days of fortune and glory. Adventuring days? So you, you are retired then? Uh, Semi-retired, actually. This region is still untamed and fraught with many dangers. I have had plenty of opportunities in the last few years to take up my sword and shield and do battle with those who threaten the safety of East Haven and its neighbors. In fact, I am planning such an expedition right now. That is what I wanted to speak to you about. What sort of expedition? We've received word from Kaldahar, our neighbors to the south, that evil forces are stirring nearby in the spine of the World Mountains. I am organizing and leading a party from East Haven south to Kaldahar Valley to investigate. You look to be capable enough. Perhaps you'd like to join us. What say you? Now, what sort of evil forces are we talking about? I don't really know. The messenger wasn't too specific. I suppose if you want more details, you could ask old Everard over at the temple. But time's a-wasting. We need to get this expedition moving before the snows seal off the pass to Kaldahar. So what's it going to be? Are you in or out? Mm, sounds exciting. Count us in. Excellent. Glad to have you on board. I plan to assemble the rest of the expedition and set out for Kaldahar within a few days. With storms brewing in the mountains, I'd rather we depart sooner. But there are matters that require my attention here about town. And what sort of matters? Perhaps you could help? Actually, now that I think about it, maybe you can help. Poma, the local shopkeeper, has recently expressed concern over the rapidly thinning stock of his store. He's been complaining that the regular caravan from Caer Dineval is long overdue, and that if they don't arrive soon, he's sure to be out of business. Now, normally I take Pomop's whining with a grain of salt, 
But with heavy snows on the way, it would be best to make sure that caravan makes it through. So what is it you want for so what is it you want me to do? I want you to find that caravan. Leave town by way of the South Bridge and scout the hills west of Lark Dinnershire, between East Haven and Care Denival. Caravans always stick close to the shoreline this time of year. Once you find it, see the caravan safely to East Haven. In the meantime, I'll assemble the rest of the expedition and make the final plans for our journey. Return here as quickly as you can. We must make for Calderhar Pass while the weather is favorable. Good luck. Safe journey. Okay, farewell. So now we have to look for a caravan. And we will do that. But we will do that in the next video. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.